and an official welcome to this mid-month service at the Church of Infinite Spirit, where we can come to be inspired, be connected, and be transformed. I'm Reverend Margaret Johnson, and I'm so, so glad you are joining me here today or by recording. Um, welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, just a couple things before we get going. Uh, most of you are familiar with the Zoom that we, we see on the line, but uh, there is a little button at the upper right of your Zoom box, that gallery that you can see all of, all of us that are online together, um, and also some options there at the bottom. I have everybody muted while we're going through our service today. And also today, our mid-month service, we don't do a community time afterwards. We'll do that uh, at our October first of the month service. All right, so on to church. So it is the mission of our church to inspire spiritual freedom so that people can know who they are as spiritual beings and also know the consciousness that creates this universe, that all one consciousness. And we support the joyous transformation that happens when we become aware of our spiritual selves. Our church is non-traditional, non-dogmatic. It is definitely a take what works for you environment. Please leave the rest. Um, and it is a place we're hoping to kind of redefine the the word or the experience of church as a place to come as a break, break from the world as a respite, uh, to have a community uh, to ground and meditate together and to really be refreshed spiritually. So that is the intention that I offer today. And how we do that largely at the Church of Infinite Spirit is through meditation. So go ahead and close your eyes. Let yourself be comfortable wherever you are seated. Isn't it amazing and actually a very powerful meditation just to close your eyes. That input of the rest of the world, we can close our eyes turn that input off. And I want you to say hello to your physical body. And just for fun, I want you to thank it, send it some gratitude for one thing that you truly appreciate about your physical body. Maybe its ability to see, or its ability to hear, listen, to music or the sounds of birds. Or maybe it's that sensation of taste. So go ahead and send your physical body some gratitude. And in that vibration of gratitude, I'm going to lead you through a four step process of a meditation. And that first step is what we call grounding. So go ahead and notice your tailbone, the very, very base of your spine. You're sitting on it. This is also your first chakra. Go ahead and create an imaginary beam of colored light coming from that first chakra. Just use your imagination in a playful way to let that grounding cord grow through the chair, or the sofa, whatever you're sitting on. With ease, it grows through the foundation, right into the earth itself. Tunnels through all the layers of the earth to reach the very center of the earth. Notice what color you picked for your beam of colored light. My color today is a light purple, a happy purple. You can pick any color except for black and white. And this conduit, this grounding cord, we call it, that connects the base of your spine, your first chakra to the center of the earth is a way to center into the body. 
to come more fully into you and also a way to release, release whatever you're carrying. Take a moment and notice within yourself, what would you like to let go of? Are you carrying some energy around frenzy, chaos, some anxiety or stress? With your eyes closed and this imaginary connection from your first chakra, the base of your spine, to the center of the earth. Just let go of whatever you might be carrying. Next, I want you to imagine coming into the very center of your head. Bring your attention there, behind your eyes, in between your ears, opening up, activating the sixth chakra place within yourself where you can see, see yourself, see the world with more neutrality, more validation. Just be there. Just imagine being there. Thoughts can come in and they can as easily leave this place. You can even watch your thoughts like on a ticker tape, not really engage with them, just notice them. Good job. Next, I want you just to notice the bubble of energy around your body. It's called your aura and it's a bubble that's usually oval in shape kind of like an Easter egg. This bubble of energy represents you, your space. Those spinning chakras, those spinning energy centers create this kind of field of energy around your body. And I want you to imagine coating or painting the outside of your aura, maybe a different color than your beam of colored light painting your Easter egg, your aura. When we do this, we delineate what belongs to us and what belongs to the rest of the world. And what a helpful, helpful exercise in these times to delineate between what really is yours and what is the rest of the world. So much is happening out there. Sometimes our energy can get really compelled out there. And it's helpful to remember, wow, your space, your aura, your body belongs to you. And you can change any energy. You can transform yourself in any way. You have complete seniority over your aura, over the energies that are flowing within you. That's so powerful. And as much as we might want to change what's outside of us, it isn't ours to change or control or manipulate. However, when we do change within, we can be more the essence of who we are, a brighter light in the world. And that does have an impact. Great, so you're sitting in your chair, you've got your beam of colored light, that grounding cord that's connected to the first chakra, all the way to the center of the earth. It's releasing whatever doesn't belong to you. Be in that center of head space, that sixth chakra behind your eyes, in between your ears. And notice you have your aura collected up around you, painted a color. Great. 
So as I mentioned, we're releasing what doesn't serve, releasing perhaps those anxieties, those worries, those fears. Let's bring in something that does align, something we want more of. So above your head, create a huge gold sun. I want you to label that gold sun with the word gratitude. And by labeling that gold sun, the energies that are filling into that gold sun are set at that particular vibration of gratitude. Let it be huge, so big above your head. Maybe it grew twice as big as you originally created it. And when it's about to burst, pop it right above your head and sit under this shower of clean, fresh energy that vibrates at gratitude. Notice it flowing into your head, your neck, your shoulders, into your torso, filling all the physical organs of your body, as well as your chakras, your energy centers. Let it fill up the hips, the legs, all the way to your toes. Let it fill your arms and hands and fingers. And then let it overflow into your aura. And just notice yourself here. Notice the experience of you in this short meditation, releasing through the grounding cord, finding the center of head, painting the outside of your aura bubble and filling in with gratitude. Maybe there's been a shift from when you first started and joined this uh, service today. So you're welcome to stay here in a nice light meditation or if it feels better to open your eyes and stretch, please do. So we talk about in the Interconnection Institute and the Church of Infinite Spirit as being a place to come to, to be inspired, be connected and be transformed. And today I'm going to talk about the middle section, be connected. I had a situation happen a couple weeks ago that really brought my attention to this aspect, to the subject of connection. But before I go there, um, you know, there's just so much in our world today that invites disconnection that pulls at our attention. And I had to laugh because I was remembering this movie that I watched in 2006, it's called RV. And it has this family and they're all busy and they're, you know, teenagers are grumpy and um, everybody's running around on their phones and on their computers. And, um, and the mom texts the family who's in the house to have them come for dinner. And I thought to myself in 2006, oh, well, I will never do that. That's just outrageous. Like I couldn't even believe it. I'd never even heard of anything like that. And I had to give myself a chuckle because I had a lot of our kids came back for a while in, in quarantine recently. And lo and behold, I, we have this you know, group text called Quarantim, T-E-A-M. And we're just texting all day long and everybody's in the house, you know, about meals, about the dog, about whatever. Um, so uh, never say never. And it just made me really realize, like, even before the COVID situation hit us, you know, we, we were pulled by so many distractions. One of them, you know, being technology, which is a great thing in the world. It's a wonderful thing that I can be joining you guys today either live or by recording. Uh, but how does it pull our attention? Does it just cause disconnection, distraction? So 
Uh, as I mentioned, I had this situation recently that really brought to home the importance of connection. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my beloved dog Sadie had some kind of seizure and um, I was able to get her in the car, had to call a neighbor, she's 74 pounds, uh, to get her in the car. And I drove to our vet and I was out, you know, I live in Santa Fe, it was a really hot day. Uh, there was uh, just the only parking places available were in the in the sun. So I had all the doors open and Sadie was just laying on the seat. Uh, very unusual for her because if a door would be open of the car, she'd be out checking out, saying hello to all the other dogs and, and the people. And um, a woman came over and said, wow, I can really tell by your body that your dog must be really sick. And um, and she started talking. Her name was Jane. And I'm thinking to myself as she's talking, you know, my dog is really sick. And I'm like really kind of freaking out over here. And I'm really trying hard to like have a conversation with my mask and social distance apart. But my dog is really sick. But then there was this voice in my head that said, stop. Listen. And connect. So I just did, I just continued in the conversation, asking her about her dog, Ziggy. And uh, she told me a little bit about her background and how she had come to Santa Fe. And as we're talking, she says, oh my gosh, I see this parking space, the one that's in the shade, the only one in this entire parking lot that's in the shade. Why don't I go stand in that parking space? and you can move your car into the shade so Sadie can be more comfortable. And this just overwhelmed me. It was such an act of kindness and such an act of, of connection. I felt immediately so much better. I felt like I wasn't alone and that there were people in the world who uh, noticed and, and were, were there to help and support me. As you can tell, I still deeply moved by this and it was a couple weeks ago. Every time I think of it, it warms me. It changed my inner experience so dramatically. This small, small act had this huge impact on me and how I connected, felt connected, not only to the physical, to other people, but then I was able in the shade to sit and ground and find my connection to source. So today I wanted just to talk about disconnection. It's, it's so easy to be and feel disconnected. And when we do, wow, it's like dominoes. It's so easy to feel afraid, anxious, to feel hopeless and powerless. It's so, so easy to go into failure or victim mode and to even blame others or blame, you know, the, the universe for where we are. And truly, disconnection is the most challenging thing a soul can create for him or herself. We are meant and designed through the vibration of connection. So when it's not there, and sometimes it's not there, we, this is a challenging time and, um, and, and we're here to, in some ways, be challenged and to disconnect. And we have the ability to do so because when we come into the physical body, it is so easy to forget who we truly are, to forget that we are infinite beings, infinite spirit, infinite energy. And we can learn and we do have the opportunity to learn through 
our ability to forget who we are. We can experience things that we couldn't experience if we always were remembering who we truly are. So disconnection is powerfully challenging. And what it does is create in people uh, expression of disconnection out in the world through words or behavior. And then that energy attracts more experiences of feeling disconnected. And these dominoes just keep going, dropping, dropping, dropping. So it's so important when we feel disconnected, when we notice that happening, that we say hello to connection to that state that we are designed most naturally to be in. When we connect, we can, we can easy, find it easier to uh, see and appreciate something, to go to that powerful vibration of gratitude. And that's a great first step. It's easier to remember, oh, yes, I'm a soul on a journey. And what a journey it is, folks. 2020, what a journey. But there's something bigger happening. And no matter what unfolds, I am an, a being of light. I'm an infinite energy. It's also... When we connect, we can remember that we're never alone. Even if we are isolated and physically by ourselves, we are always connected to source. And I would say we come from source. Thus, the natural state of who we are as a spiritual being is connection to source. When we go to connection in this way, we have the ability, just even for a moment, <clears throat> to recognize, <clears throat> pardon me, that all is well. That we can come into the present moment. In this present moment, all is well here. This is so powerful and strengthens our ability to connect. And in the same way, connection creates dominoes. When we focus on connection, when we say yes to connection, then we attract more experiences that give us the sensation, remind us of connection. It's so powerful. In the world outside, when we, and we do, you know, we watch the news occasionally, of course, we have to know what's going on. And of course we don't, it's total choice. But it is so easy to think, wow, everybody's disconnected. You know, the news and social media can be such a pull into a perceived universal truth. This is everybody. But what I experienced in that parking lot really reminded me that there is so much connection still in this world. Connection to nature, connection to each other, connection to the truth of who we are, and connection to source. And that connection to source is always there. It never goes away. Yes, sometimes we unplug. I unplugged in my panic, and I am not beating myself up for it. It was human. But I was so, so grateful for Jane to help me plug back in. And when we are connected, when we feed and nourish ourselves through that connection of who we are as a spiritual being and connection to something larger, then it's so much easier to say hello to others, to offer others what Jane offered me. And in that way, transform the world. So I invite you to stop, to stop. Every now and then just stop, turn off your phone, go outside, 
Notice your breath. Close your eyes. Stop. Take a big deep breath. And listen. Listen to the voices in your head. Listen to what you're feeling. Acknowledge it. And then let go of what isn't serving you. Notice, listen, is that your truth? And then connect, connect by grounding, connect by coming into the center of your head, connect by saying hello to source energy, saying yes to that energy, or yes simply to the concept of connection. It is a challenging time right now, and it is such a time that we can manage our energy within. We can stop, we can listen, we can connect. We have power here. And from that power, that alignment, that connection, Again, we can say hello to others and be an agent of change in the world. So let's practice that a little bit in a meditation. Go ahead, if you have your eyes open, close them again. Come back into the center of your head, noticing you're still grounded, noticing you're releasing energy Notice in this moment if there's more to let go of. Are you holding energies of disconnection? Maybe it's a little easier now to let them go, release, let your body relax into your chair and really let go. be in the center of your head and just use your imagination to imagine a golden beam of light coming from source, coming from the center of the universe, coming from spirit with a capital S, this golden beam of light. Let it turn into a column of light and let it begin to envelop your head, your shoulders, your torso, so that you're surrounded by this ray, by this column of light. Let it envelop your legs and your feet. this connection from source, this energy that's always available. Notice your experience when you're connected in this way. Notice perhaps an even greater ability to release down the grounding cord what isn't connected. Notice what is your truth in this space? I'm a being in a body having an adventure. All is well. This connection is available for you any time. This unique ray, this column of energy that connects who you are, the essence of who you are to source energy. It's the ultimate connection. 
It's the one that feeds us, satisfies us, nourishes us, and heals us. Great. Good job. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Stretch your body if that feels good. I do want to give you a Sadie update. She is well. <laughs> she is. I took her this morning for a follow-up and they can't figure out what it was. Uh, so she is back to her her uh, Labrador self, eating her way through life. <laughs> if those of you who've ever had a Labrador, you know what I mean. Great, so uh, this is the point in, in our time together where I just wanna send a hello to the fact that we are a nonprofit and that we so, so appreciate uh, your support in donation, your support in spreading the word about who we are. Um, uh, so if it feels good to uh, send a donation, we do have a donation button on our website, which is the interconnectioninstitute.org. And that button is on our sanctuary page at the bottom. So I invite you to, to uh, support us in any way that works for you. And thank you for that. Um, lately, I've been doing a little joke, which probably I should have done today because uh, it's always great to have a little amusement, right, with us on our spiritual journey. But today I'm going to do something a little different because um, I wrote a poem, a poem kind of, uh, I was inspired by the, when I was working on this message to write a poem and I thought it would be fun to share with you. Uh, and the poem is called The Spectator. Us versus them is the main event. Both parties arrive with their frothing fans. Win, 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 the voices roar. Hate, hate, hate brightens the lights over the ring, dissecting the prey in the opposite corner. We which is capital W-E, we sits alone, waiting, rafters high, arms stretched in alchemy, empty space to observe the greatest battle spars within. Look up. Thanks for letting me share that. It was fun to write. So a couple of announcements. Um, I'm going to be teaching a deep dive class, a four week class that starts in October, on October 21st, all about gratitude. So as we come into the season of holiday and the season of election, um, I invite you to join me in this deep dive. Gratitude is really, truly one of the most powerful energies that can shift the way we experience ourselves and the way we see our world. So I'm gonna go deep, deep into gratitude for four weeks and I'd love it if you would join me there. Um, also, as you probably are aware, we have our Meditation for Living. Uh, that's our foundational or introductory course rather. That's free on our uh, virtual classroom and you can always find that on our website. There's a tab, a virtual classroom tab on the upper right corner. And also there are on our YouTube channel, Interconnection Institute, there are recordings of these services. Um, one that came to mind for me, given the experience I had with Sadie, um, Lauren did a great one on um, giving and receiving. Uh, receiving is always something I am practicing and I uh, was grateful to practice that with Jane in the parking lot of the vet. So that's a fun one to check out if you didn't, uh, didn't see it. Our next service will be uh, October 4th. Allie will be leading that one at 1.30. So um, look forward to seeing you all then. And truly, I am so deeply grateful for you all sharing your time and attention. These are such powerful resources. And I really um, 
deeply, deeply grateful for you sharing yours um, with me today. So be well, uh, be connected, uh, and go forth, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you being here.